So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll just start at the beginning, right? So, um, we're going to take, this is the cable that goes to my speaker. I'm going to plug this into sign output. Sign, triangle, ramp. PWM. So we're just going to plug it into sign for now. And I'm going to take this other oscillator over here. We're going to take this oscillator and we're going to plug it into the binary divider, counting down. And then we've got these, we've got these outputs. And uh, this clock divider is going to provide the logical signals to control this uh, this analog switch. There are three analog switches in this module. So we're going to have this guy control the first switch by plugging in a gate signal into the gate in over here. And now you can see that these two are the same signal. And we're going to plug in this sign from my voltage controlled oscillator into the input, and we're going to look at the output, or listen to the output, I guess. And now, what we're going to do next... I'm going to get the right cable, or a cable. Instead, I'm going to take this one and plug it into the next one. So now we've got this other one. There's this other separate um, analog switch here, and that's being controlled by a different gate signal. And we're going to go like this. We're going to actually, um, we need to... We need to connect the output of this into the input of this. So then we have the sine wave coming in here, being switched on and off by this up here, and then the output goes in to this analog switch and it's being uh, switched by this gate signal and then output here. So the sine wave is only played when both gate signals are high. And the way that I wired this is such that the input, when you unplug the jack, it actually just, it, there's an internal connection from this input to this output by default. So this connection is actually um, unnecessary in this case if I want to control one audio signal with two gates. So it's just a little more convenient. And now if I want to uh, if I want to control it by, say, three gate signals, what I can do is I can plug in this third analog switch, the gate for this one, into another logical. And then look at the output from this. Because again, this input is internally wired to this output by default. 
so these connections from this input to this output and this input to this output aren't necessary. They're optional in this case. So in this way you can have one audio input, one audio output, and then just the gates connected because the their internal connections and that kind of just kind of cleans it up, makes it easier. But uh, that said, it is possible to make all of these work independently. So you don't need to have them cascaded. That's just a just kind of by default what happens because it's maybe useful. So here I've sped up the uh, the I've sped up the gate. Now I've switched the voltage controlled oscillator into the LFO mode. Uh, basically just brings the frequency down like a decade or two or some number of octaves. Now I'm going to uh, take a look at, or I'm going to plug the control voltage uh, modulation into the sine. So often I find these patches that I make sound kind of like Pac-Man video game effects. One time I made a patch that sounded kind of like the waka 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 sound that he makes when he's eating the Pac-Dots. This isn't it. PWM instead. This is really harsh. 